moving to chapter 18, which deals with income taxes, uh, the impact of just taxes on production and uh, prices for the consumers and producers, and the Laffer curve. So what is the Laffer curve? If you recall well, it's this Laffer curve that represents the relationship between tax rate on the horizontal axis and tax revenue. And from what we've done, we could see that if tax rate is equal to zero, well, tax revenue is also going to be equal to zero. And that it's going to go up and it's going to start going back down because if the tax rate were to go to 100%, the tax revenue would be very small or likely zero because if you're going to be completely taking away everyone's money from what they earn working hard and you're doing forced voluntary work most people would just not work legally and would work in uh, the black market or something else so you'd have a tax revenue of zero so what we've seen in class and the idea is that there is this tax rate that leads to a maximum tax revenue so it shows that for any tax tax revenues reach a maximum at some rate below 100 percent that's pretty much what a laffer curve shows it might not say precisely unless you do further study into the country that you're in and the time period that you're in but that's essentially the main message that below 100 percent you're going to have your max tax revenue at a certain tax rate and if you increase taxes more than that tax revenues will start dropping because people will start losing an incentive to work it uh, relates to the marginal tax rate to the average tax rate that's not what it's about it relates to the government total income tax revenue to the average rate across all taxes uh, it's not necessarily across all taxes you could do this on every individual tax basis relates to the government sales tax yield to the marginal tax rate. Um, once again, uh, it's not with respect uh, to this necessarily, like it's really based on a specific tax rate and the tax revenues. Uh, shows that tax revenues uh, reach a maximum when the marginal tax rate is zero, that's false. If it was zero, well then we wouldn't have any tax revenues. The table below shows 2015 federal income tax rates in Canada. Refer to table 18.1. And if an individual had a taxable income of 120,000, how much federal tax would be due from the earnings tax at the rate of 26%? So the thing that you have to understand is that first 44,000 of that 120 will be at 15%. The next 44-ish thousand will be at 22%. So that's 88 or 89,402 to be precise. And then the remaining amount, so around 31,000, will be at 26%. It's not true that you multiply 26% times 120,000 or else you're going to get things wrong. There's parts of their income that were taxed at the lower rate. When you go from 89,401 to 89,402, you don't suddenly increase how much you owe to the government by a whole lot amount of money because everything is taxed more it's only that extra dollar that's taxed at the high rate so let's calculate this out well i have 120,000 oops sorry i have 120,000 and uh this 120,000 is going to be taxed at 26 percent that would be the wrong way to do it so let's do it the right way out of that 120,000 not all of it is taxed at 26%. Whoops. Clear all of this. Out of the 120,000, there's an 89,402 that was taxed at either 15 or 22%. So there's only 30,000 within this bracket because they don't earn the whole 138,000. There's only 30,598 in this bracket. So that times the 26% is 7,955. Um, I would expect if you would have taken the whole amount, you'd be somewhere more like 31,000, which would be kind of like that quarter of 100,000, a little bit more than a quarter. So that throws you off. Um, but naturally, read your question right and make sure you understand it. 
The diagram below shows supply and demand diagrams and for some product, the government then imposes an excise tax. So I include this as a practice question for a few reasons. One, it's to understand how taxes work, even though in class and in the videos, I cover more the idea of a tax wedge. You could see it this way as well as a supply curve with a tax. So this vertical distance between the two supply curves is the same thing as a vertical distance of the tax wedge. So you should be clear on this in case a diagram like this shows up on an exam or in a quiz. So here, this vertical distance is my tax wedge. So we used to sell 100 units at $6. There's this introduction of a tax that creates this gap between the two supply curves, this tax wedge. So now we only produce 90 units. The price paid by a consumer is $7. The price received by a supplier is $5. So the per unit tax would be $2. Those could all be a bunch of questions related to this diagram, but here they're asking about what is the dollar value of the excess burden of this tax. <clears throat> I won't necessarily need you guys to compute this area here, but I want you guys to understand that if we wanted to know what is the excess burden of this tax wedge here, well, it's gonna be this triangle here. So if there was letters like one and two, uh, A and B or one and two, this is what we're representing. This little area here is my excess burden. It's my debt weight loss. My direct tax burden is the amount of tax revenue collected, which would be $2 times uh, 90 units, $180, which would be this rectangle here, this whole area. So this $180 is my tax revenue or my direct tax burden. My excess is this area here. And if you wanted to calculate this triangle, well, it's gonna be the width times the height divided by two. So 10 times two, 20 divided by two, because I don't have this whole area, I only have this area here. So it is $10. Which of the following statements suggest that property taxes might be progressive? So you have to first remember what does progressive mean? Progressive versus regressive. Progressive means that richer people pay a higher amount of taxes. Uh, that we're not treating uh, poor people unfairly. So if we if everyone paid the same property taxes, this would be seen as regressive. It would be seen as it hurts poor people more because let's say everyone's charged $2,000. Well, $2,000 when you earn 20,000 is 10% of your income. If you earn 2 million, well, it's just a very small percentage of your income. So that would be seen as regressive. Progressive, it has to hurt more and more the more you earn. Like the income taxes that we had above and the ones that we have here, the more I earn, the more every extra dollar is taxed at a higher rate. So higher income people live in more expensive houses than do low income is a situation that explains why they might be seen as progressive because property taxes are based on the municipal evaluation of your house. So if your municipal evaluation is higher, so you have a more expensive house, then you pay more property taxes. Uh, the other answer is here, the proportion of income spent on housing tends to decline as income raises. Uh, that would not make it as progressive and make it more regressive. Uh, property tax shift to the renters has no point. Inner city neighborhoods often have higher property taxes than do more affluent suburbs, but it doesn't really say who lives in the inner city versus the affluent suburbs, so it can't really confirm this. And elderly pensioners often live in their family homes after children have left. It has no point. It's not related to this idea of progressive or regressive. So that's it. The figure below shows a simplified version of the Canadian federal income tax system. So this is a diagrammatical format of the table we had higher up. What this tells me, if this isn't clear, you might have to zoom in, but this for anything I earn but below zero and 42,707 is I am taxed 15%. Anything between this amount and this amount, 22%, this amount and this amount, 26, and then 29 for anything above. So it just tells us how much and the tax paid here, this amount here, well, this is if I earn this whole bracket, times 15%, this is that amount. And then this is if I fill both first two brackets, that's much how much I owe, and so on and so forth. 
An individual with a taxable income of 39500 will pay how much in income taxes? Well, this is quite straightforward because he didn't have multiple brackets, so it's not going to be a lengthy calculation. All of that 39500 is within this first bracket, so it is all taxed at 15%. What is 39,500 times 15%? Let's figure it out. 5,925. That is your answer. Hopefully, all of this has clarified the answers to the practice quiz of chapter, 11, uh, chapter 18. Thanks.